everyone. Today on the plastic canvas we're painting a child of the goat from Mansions of Madness. Plastic Canvas and welcome to another Mansions of Madness miniature painting video. Um, Mansions of Madness is a co-op exploration game where players take on the role of paranormal investigators um, and then go into a location to try and investigate um, what strange happenings are, are going on to try and get to the bottom of it. Um, it is a fantastic game with a horror sort of Lovecraftian Cthulhu style theme to it and of course being horror related. i um, got to go up against some baddies and the child of the goat here is um, is one of those baddies that you go up against. Um, now we've had this, this game for a little while, a um, couple of years probably, um, and back when we first got it well before I started even thinking about painting minis, um, we glued these down to the base um, just because they don't actually fit too well in the base and we didn't want to have to keep putting them back together um, and having them falling out while they were while we were playing so we've um we've glued them in so that's why i'm going to be painting her on the base um, but they do have these um cards in the base a couple of slots here so you can see the name these numbers are referred to during the game um, and then also on the back if the enemy has any um, special abilities that goes here but there's also a little bit of flavor text and for our child of the goat it says to all appearances the children of the goat are ordinary people it is in their appetites and devotion that the aberration lies so they're not uh, like a, a demon -y sort of thing like some of the other um, um, enemies are um, ordinary sort of looking people um, but I am able to get the card out for her um oh there we go um and there is a little bit of a little bit of artwork on there um to sort of use as a bit of a a basis for um for the colors um so yeah so that'll go that'll go back in there but nothing's been done with her so far so i'll be starting off with a prime um still using my brush on primer um if you're if you haven't sort of been checking out all of the videos and you're wondering why i'm using a brush on primer as opposed to spray on um check out some of the earlier um, zombie 15 videos especially the siphon video um, just where I um, talk a bit in there about why I'm using a brush on as opposed to a, a spray on primer um, but I will definitely be using moving to a spray on primer um, soon as I start getting into some of these bigger bigger minis from some other games um, so yeah so gonna be brushing on a prime for her um, then that'll get a good at least 24 hours to properly bond to the plastic before I then go on and do any more painting. So, yep, so I'll get that done um, and then come back at the start of the next video to, to talk about what I'm going to be doing with her. So, yeah, so just going to give a prime to Child of the Goat. There we go, so that's got the prime done on her. Um, that was all of about 90 seconds worth of painting. Um, now I think I've mentioned this in some of the other videos, um, just in case you're wondering what brush I'm using to, to prime her with. Um, this is just one of the brushes that came in my original um, set of brushes that I got. I don't use these anymore for brushing, um, sorry, for, for painting. Um, but uh, I keep them aside for, for the little jobs where it doesn't matter if I um, uh, ruin the bristles a bit. But this is a a size a size eight, which is really good um, for e even minis that are that are this size that aren't too big. Um, just gets really really quick quick coverage. That's a really really good size. So yeah, if you if you have a a set line around um, that you don't really use too much anymore, or if you've sort of upgraded, um, like I've moved on to the, from these onto um, the Army Painter Wargamer brushes, um, definitely. Definitely keep them around for those jobs where you don't want to have to worry too much about about the bristles. But yeah, so she's going to have a good bit of time to dry now um, so that the primer can properly go off um, and then we'll come back and get into base coating. Alright, so our child of the goat has been primed um, and had a good chance for that um, primer to properly go off and bond to the plastics and now it's time to do our, our base coat. Um, now, with the bit of artwork that's on the card in here, 
um, you can see just a uh, um, like to, uh, to all appearances, the children of the goat are ordinary people. It is in their appetites and devotion that the aberration lies. So, um, you know, between the artwork and the text, they're just regular people, um, um, just wearing a, a little bit of clothing. But what I sort of thought, rather than just because um, there's um, the, the vast majority of the mini is just going to be skin. Um, I'll, rather than just painting just a regular skin tone, I thought maybe if, um, uh, you know, if they've sort of been, like I'm not, not really sure if they've been possessed to some degree or something like that. Um, maybe they're not like as healthy as what they, what they would normally be. So I'm going to try and mix a little bit of grey in with the skin tone just so that it sort of looks a little bit more washed out. Um, just to, just so they don't. So yes, they're ordinary in appearance, but um, maybe sort of looking a little bit, a little bit sickly kind of. Um, I'm not sure it might, it might not look quite, quite right. But we'll see how we go. Just so, just going to try something a little bit different. So yeah, so it's just my regular skin tone with just a little bit of grey mixed in, um, just to sort of see if it gives a bit of a, bit of an effect of yeah, maybe a little bit malnourished, something like that, just to kind of reflect the fact that maybe. Um, you know, if, if they've been possessed, just not, not looking after themselves as what they, as well as what they normally would. Right, I'm not actually minding that so far. Um, I think that's looking all right. Um, definitely sort of with the, the grey tinge to the, to the skin tone, it doesn't look as healthy as, um, as what a what a skin tone normally would. Um, if this was a more involved mini, I might actually wet blend in some different um, some different tones, um, just to add a little bit more a little bit more interest and just kind of push that idea a bit more. But I mean, she's she's pretty small and pretty basic, so just um, yeah, just going with a little bit of grey mixed in with a skin tone, um, and yeah, it's just kind of giving that that impression a bit of. Um, yeah, there just isn't that warmth to the skin that um, that there normally would be. I guess that's probably a good way to describe what I'm going for. Yet, yeah, it's not having that warmth um, that there normally would be. So the skin tone is done now for the child of the goat. Um, happy with that tone. Um, it's yeah, quite a bit of grey is coming through there. It's still a skin tone, but um, yeah, I was just going for a look where just that warmth had been taken out of it. Um, and happy with that. So now I'm going to go on to her clothing next, um, and I think I can get yeah, get the card out for her. Oops. Um, so it's pretty close to sort of a an off-white skin tony sort of colour for our clothing. Um, so what I'm going to do is just to get that kind of um, off-white but a little bit sort of dirty colour that I want to sort of try and get is I'm going to paint her clothing a bone colour. Um, so I'm just going to use my skeleton bone um, colour which is... 
just that one there, skeleton bone. And when that's dry, I'm then going to do a um, thin down sepia wash over the top. So it'll just give it a bit of a brown tinge. Um, and as that um, flows into the recesses, that'll just add a little bit of depth and give it that sort of more off-white kind of dirty colour. So yeah, so just skeleton bone and then there'll be a sepia wash over the top of that. bits done. Um, so I'm just going to try something with her skin. Um, I want to do a wash on the skin just to bring out just a little bit more definition but if I use, so Reichlin Flesh Shade is the, the shade that I've got um, but I'm just worried if I use that over the, the tone that I've got with that grey coming through that it's going to add um, too much sort of warmth back into her skin tone. So what I'm going to try and do, and I might not even end up putting it on, it might not look any good, is to mix um, some Reichlin with Null Oil um, and just see if that if the, the black washing with the skin tone um, just brings it close enough to this tone that it'll keep that look that I'm going for but still add some definition. So I'm just going to try and mix that together um, just see how it looks. If it looks no good, then I won't even put it on. Um, but if it looks like it'll be okay, then I can I can give it a go. I can easily paint back over over any parts that I try if it doesn't look any good because she is not a big mini. All right, so I'm not sure if it's going to give the look that I want. In the palette it's sort of looking okay but anyway we'll see how we go um i might just end up doing a little bit and just sort of see how it how it looks So that 
wash is dry now. It's actually ended up um, drying a little darker than what I thought it would, um, which, which is fine um, because it's still sort of got the... Um, um, sort of the impression from the skin tone that I want it to have. Um, just that, you know, she's... Um, yeah, it just doesn't have that warmth to the skin that, that she would if she hasn't sort of been possessed to some sort of degree. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to do some um, some simple highlighting now just to bring up um, just those those spots that would be getting hit by more of the light just back up to that tone that I initially had. Um, and then that way um, it's just going to add a little bit more more definition um, and just bring that um, that more grey um, skin tone back that I that I initially had. So just going to do some simple highlighting um, just by um, just picking out the spots back with the base coat um, where the light would be hitting and then just feathering out the edge um, just to the disappears and blends into the, the tone that I've got there at the moment. So the way that I sort of do that feathering, um, I've done, done this in a couple of other videos, so you might have already seen this, but um, just paint basically where the light would be hitting. And then there's two ways you can go about it from here. You can either wash the, the paint off in the water, um, and then so you've basically just got water in the bristles and then just feather out the edge, or you can do like I do, the bad habit that I've gotten into of licking the paint off and then um, so you're um, then wetting the bristles with less paint um, and then you can feather out, feather out those edges. So that's just what I'm going to do. Pick up those, the spots where the, the light's going to be hitting, feather out the edges, um, just to bring back um, that more grey tone, just more where the light's going to be hitting. in there has just brought um, back that skin tone that I was going for in those spots where most of the light would be hitting. Um, and then when I sort of finished that off, um, I was just sort of thinking about, because I just sort of more noticed when I was um, just sort of touching up her um, hands and feet that being barefoot 
and I think from her card, um, she's walking walking through the woods there. Um, her hands and feet are probably going to be dirty. So I started with, just to give a bit of a dirt effect there on her hands and feet, um, I started with a very, very thin down brown um, that I was able to work up her legs from feet, work up, and then from hands, work up, and then work in a little bit more brown into that and then start from the fingertips and work up but not quite as far as the layer before and go from her toes up but not as far as before, work in a bit more brown and then repeat that process and as there was more brown, I just didn't go quite as far. And then so most of the dirt sort of look as concentrated on her hand and on her feet um, and then a little less going up her legs. Um, on the back of her legs though, um, that more concentrated brown, I painted it up the back of her legs because as you're walking, anyone that's walked through um, like on a muddy track or something like that or if you've gone running on the beach, you know you get sand or dirt all over the back of your legs. So I painted a little bit more of that there. That's just to add an extra little element to, to the mini. Um, so now I'm going to do a thin down sepia wash on the, the you know the small amount of clothes that she's wearing, um, just to give it a bit of an off white, dirty kind of look, um, and add a, it'll just add a little bit more depth into the folds, um, and then I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing on her hair, um, and the way that I'll do that will be a similar process to what I did with her arms, where. I'll start with a slightly lighter version of her hair tone, pretty well dry brush the whole thing, and then mix in a little bit more white just to lighten it a bit, and then catch just the parts that would be, would be getting a bit more light, um, and then add a bit more white, um, and then catch the just the next bits that are only going to be getting light until I hit the spots that are um, going to get the highest concentration of light and that'll be well on the way towards being just white. So the more white that goes in, the less I'll be catching just so it gives that that contrast and um, so the lighter spots will just be where the, where the most amount of light's hitting. So those are the next couple of steps that I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, so with the, the sepia wash that goes on her clothes, it's going to be very, very thin down because I don't actually want it to turn it brown. I still want it to be this um, kind of off-whitish colour, um, but I still want there to be enough of the pigment from the wash um, that it will sort of tint her clothes, add a bit of definition, but not change the colour, if that makes sense. Hopefully I can get the right effect and then you'll see what I'm going for. So just for the with the wash, I'm going to mix it in my um, in my palette um, rather than just like wetting my brush and then um, and then just taking it from the pot. Um, so yeah, so it's just going to be a, a couple of drops just in here um, and then quite a bit of water um, and then I can like test it up against the edge there just to make sure I've got that concentration right. You can see that just on my nail there, um, it's mostly water, but it does have a little bit of tint to it. And it's actually hard to sort of pick up there because of how thin it is. Um, so, yeah, hopefully this will sort of work out. Um, and, uh, yeah, it'll just, um, yeah, just tint the clothes a bit, give it that off-white look, a little bit dirty, um, and just bring out some definition.
really happy with how her clothes are looking there. Um, it's given the effect that I wanted. It's just um, the wash is pulling just sort of nicely in the folds in the clothes, um, just to give that, just to give that dirty sort of worn look. Um, I'm going to come back and do some highlighting back up with the um, the bone base colour that I used just to pick out some of those details but yeah really happy with how that's looking um, and got a bit of um, texture going on in her hair there. <clears throat> so the last step that I will be doing obviously I, I still need to be highlighting her clothes back up but the last step will be to be um, finishing off her base and what I'm doing with each of the sort of human form um, minis is using um, a Grelin Earth um, which is a Citadel um, texture paint and the idea of it is that you paint it on really really thick and then as it dries it cracks and so it'll it'll dry brown but then what I'm going to do is wet blend some greys blacks and whites into it so that it ends up looking like sort of a stony concretey kind of look as so though she's kind of walking along a cracked path or or something like that but the first thing that I'll need to do is prime the base where I'll be actually putting it um, so that it's not going straight onto the plastic. So what I'm going to do is just do, do the prime now um, and I'm going to leave some um, sort of curvy edges, some uneven edges, so that when it's painted it gives the illusion that it continues beyond the limit of where I actually painted. So that's just going to be the next step. It's going to prime that um, and then when I come back back after everything's dry, I'll then highlight her clothes um, and then paint uh, paint the cracked texture that gets left by a grill on earth. So everything's dried up well now, that prime's gone off and the wash on her clothes has has dried as well um, to the point where I can now do some highlighting. I'm really happy with how that wash is looking, it's given that um, that effect that I was after where it's um, settled it nicely into those recesses, given it that off-white dirty colour but it hasn't actually taken away um, from the actual tone of the of the clothing. So yes, I'm just going to do some, some simple highlighting now, just pick out some of the um, just those high spots where, where the light would be catching um, and then then I'm going to paint the base um, and for that I'll be using um, a ghrelin earth so all the human um, sort of at least shaped minis um, I'm going to use this for the base um, and then when this dries so you put it on thick when it dries it cracks so um, if you left it just like this straight out of the bottle, um, it would then look like sort of dried cracked earth. Um, but then I'm going to go over and blend in some greys, blacks and whites together to um, create a stony concrete sort of look. Um, but yeah, so highlight the clothes and put on the base. Um, and then we'll check back in before I do the, um, before I paint it up. Um, oh, so because I base coated her clothes with skeleton bone, um, where are we? Just that one there. Um, this is what I'm going to use to to highlight. So I'm just going to highlight back up with the same colour that I used um, for the base coat. Um, that's the way so far that I've been highlighting. It's the way that I found it easier to get the right looking highlight um, as opposed to trying to um, like mix up a lighter looking version of what this tone is at the moment just go straight back to the base coat um, and that tends to look right
All right, so that acryl on earth has dried there, um, and yeah, sort of cracked up pretty nicely. You can see in the spots where I was able to put it a bit thicker because it was a bit further away from the actual mini itself, it's um, cracked a bit better. Um, so yeah, so out here, I was able to sort of get it pretty thick, um, and so yeah, got some really, really good cracks in there, but then where I didn't quite get it as thick, um, you can see sort of right in there around um, at the bottoms of both of her feet there, I wasn't able to get the brushing quite as much to get under the foot. Um, it's a bit thinner there, and it hasn't cracked. So, yeah, obviously, the the thicker you can put it, the, um, the, the bigger the cracks are. So, I guess, yeah, it comes down to what sort of an effect you want. But I don't actually mind that having um, some, some little ones through here and some bigger ones through there. Um, just adds that more sort of um, natural kind of element to it because they're not all going to be uniformly cracked. Anyway, so going to um, paint the Agrilla and Earth now to make it um, look like, give, give it that stony sort of effect. So I'm going to use a grey base and then wet, wet, wet blend, sorry, in some blacks and whites to add a bit of contrast. Um, but then also just to give that texture of the stone. So where more of the cracks are, I'll be um, focusing some more white there just to catch a bit more of the light. Um, and then... Um, where there's less cracks and then down around her feet blend in a little bit more black there to create a bit more um, bit more of a shadow effect there um, So yeah, so I've got um, Gray black and white bit of dry and retarder in with each just to um, Let me sort of blend for as long as possible and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how it ends up looking um, Just quickly um, like in the Goat Spawn and the Ghost video, um, which are the other ones in which I've painted um, the Agrilla and Earth in the same way. Um, as much as possible, and it's a little hard to do because the paint will be thinned down a bit, but as much as possible, I'm going to try and keep the paint out of the cracks just to, to try and keep the contrast. Um, but if it does flow in there, I'll go back with some black and and I'll paint in there just to bring that contrast back out. But yeah, as much as possible, I'll try and keep it out, but it will be a bit tricky because I will be moving sort of semi semi quickly um, but then you also the the paint is is thin down but we'll see how we go there for the child of the goat is done. I'm really happy with how that's come up. Um, it's got a good sort of stony, concretey kind of look to it. Um, you might have noticed I went back and did put some black in um, between some of the, the bigger cracks. Um, I was a bit selective with which ones I did actually put the black line in between because as it built the contrast I thought if I picked out sort of some groups like there's a bit of a group there, a group there and then a little, little bit over here it just makes it look a little bit more uneven um, and it just sort of draws your eye, well hopefully it draws your eye more to these these groups and it just adds a little bit more um, yeah, texture 
and unevenness to the look of the base so it's not quite so flat looking but um in terms of the the depth of the colors happy there and yeah a little bit of um a little bit of the um darker gray in underneath just a, a basic sort of shadow effect there so the last step to do for the child of the goat is to varnish her um, and the purpose of that is just so that the topmost exposed layer isn't the paint which is not a hard wearing surface and um, can easily chip um, whereas a varnish is hard wearing so that it can it can cop those um, you know knocks as the you know whether it's in the box or just from general wear and tear of the of the game being used um, so I'm going to be using a this matte varnish here, um, which is a, just my Vallejo varnish, um, and this is the only one that I've got. I will be getting a, a gloss varnish at some point, but the matte varnish just has no reflection to it, so it'll end up looking exactly the same as, as what it is at the moment. There's no reflective surfaces on her um, that I'd want to that I want to keep looking reflective, so so the matte will will do the job. Um, so I don't need too much of this. I've varnished a couple of minis now. For them, I followed um, the recommendations of uh, people on videos that I watched who said not to to water it down at all, um, and that seems to be a good bit of advice to follow. Um, it does actually say on here, um, just there, um, so it can be diluted with water, um, but it doesn't seem like it needs to be. And you don't need too much of this, so just a, a couple of drops, just a quick little shake. Um, and a couple of drops is is enough. So that there will be enough to, to do her. So just going to use my um, size 4 brush, just one of my older ones that I keep around, just for these sorts of jobs where it doesn't matter um, if I'm sort of uh, not looking after the bristles so much. So just a little bit of water on the on the bristles, just to help it flow that little bit more, but no actual water in the varnish itself. Um, just quickly while, while I am putting the varnish on, so the, the first mini that I put the varnish on was Ghost, which is the first video in this series. And there was one tiny, tiny, tiny spot um, where the the varnish didn't quite dry perfectly clear because it had pulled a little bit in, or, or you know, it had built up a bit in a little bit of a recess. Um, and that was just because I didn't um, look closely enough and spread it around as much as I could have. So in the the minis that I've done since then, um, and including, oh, just got some stray bristles from the brush. brush. Um, yeah, so including this one, I'm really just making sure, kind of like if you're doing a wash, you don't want it to pull too heavily anywhere. Um, same thing with the varnish. So made this, that little bit of a mistake in the first one. It's really only noticeable if you go looking for it. So I, you know, I, I found it. Um, but yeah, it was something that I picked up on. So yeah, just need to keep a bit of an eye on just making sure it's not, not sitting too thickly anywhere because in that case it won't actually dry perfectly transparent. Um, and it will have some minor reflection to it, but all of that there's, all of that there's looking pretty good. Just a couple of tiny little spots just to even it out a bit. But yeah, that's all. That's all looking pretty good. I'll just a little bit back in the back of her knee there. Alright, so now I'll leave that to, to dry. Um, and then we'll come back and... Then we'll come back and finish off the video. Alright, so with that varnish dry, uh, we can call our Child of the Goat done. And that's another Mansions of Madness mini done.
So thank you very, very much for spending some time watching me paint. I really, really do appreciate the time you guys do put into watching these videos. Um, as always, I really, really hope you've gotten something out of this video that you can take away in using your own painting, or just at the very least, uh, you've just enjoyed watching me paint. Um, and please do leave a comment down below, something that you've enjoyed about the video, something that you think can be improved. Um, and that feedback really, really helps me to make this uh, channel as good as possible for you guys. I can't do that on my own. Um, and yeah, please do like and subscribe if you've enjoyed watching me paint so that you can keep up to date with these videos as they come out. Um, but yeah, so another one done. Happy with how she's looking, so she's ready to take on the, the paranormal investigators. All right, so thanks very much, everyone. This is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.